My soul is so tired. Our souls are so tired. Maria, a single migrant mother of two receiving aid at Key No Border Initiative, had just finished telling her story of astonishing trauma that included resisting demands from a drug cartel, fleeing violence, and searching for her kidnapped child. It was a true testament of strength, resilience, and hope. In the sacred silence that followed her words, our St. Joseph delegation of six received her witness and held her sharing with quiet reverence. In those moments, I beheld the treasure in the field, glimpsed the pearl of great price. I felt the experience of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, or as I like to refer to it, the kingdom, using Father Greg Boyle's term, was not what I expected, all neat and tidy and happy. The kingdom is gritty and grace-filled. It's a place of authentic encounter where we see honor, and acknowledge the holiness of another. Maria's story was one of many that our delegation and the two previous delegations from St. Joseph received to help us understand the difficult challenges that migrants at the border face as they seek asylum and safety. Kino Border Initiative or KBI, is a Jesuit ministry in Nogales on both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border. Its stated vision is migration with dignity, and their mission is to promote humane, just, and workable migration through humanitarian assistance, holistic accompaniment of migrants, and work on policy advocacy. KBI also offers education through encounters between migrants and others to build solidarity. And over 20 people from our parish have been among those who have experienced the life-changing six-day immersion at Kino. At our KVI orientation, we were invited to ponder three words, humanize, complicate, and accompany. By humanize, we were challenged to seek to understand the stories that make up the immigration issue from a variety of voices, including some that we might strongly disagree with being willing to open our, our eyes and our hearts meant engaging with people and institutions that were confounding or downright broken without demonizing anyone. As a young Jesuit in formation, Jarrett told our group about the immigration issue, it's complicated. Complicate. That was the second word we were invited to ponder, that this issue of migration is messy, complex, and multifaceted. We were instructed to lay down our preconceived notions and be willing to listen to those who deal with this problem associated with current migration policies in order to see the larger picture of the truth. And finally, in our orientation, we were invited to accompany. No saving, no problem solving, no platitudes, just coming in alongside those we would meet and be willing to learn. So learn we did from our experiences, from many people, 
and from the desert itself, a dangerous, punishing place which many migrants attempt to cross, often leading to injury or death. Our first experience as a delegation was to walk in the desert on a rugged trail that migrants, including women and children, have used in their attempt to flee for safety. On that particular morning, we were lucky that the temperature was only 90 degrees. We had all been told to wear sturdy hiking boots and long sleeve shirts. And although I felt well prepared, within three minutes of our hike in the desert, I slipped and instinctively grabbed, out, grabbed onto a bush to catch myself, only to discover that it was filled with thorns. Looking at my bleeding hand, I thought to myself, Okay, this just got very real. The hot, arduous hike gave me plenty of time to imagine just how bad someone's situation would have to be to make a choice to enduring this life-threatening journey. I also reflected on the many unearned privileges I had safety, security, and many resources. After our desert walk, our delegation was served a lovely potluck by a small but generous group of ranchers who gave us a different perspective of the immigration issue. Their lands extend to the U.S. border, and ranchers often encounter suffering migrants and dangerous cartels. Fearing horrific violence from those cartels, ranchers are, under, are understandably worried, and many have moved out of the area. We also met with Border Patrol officers who were polite but reserved. They explained the complexity of policies that they have to enforce without adequate personnel and expressed their frustration with a system they cannot change. In hearing these perspectives, whether we agreed with them or not, we could not deny that the issue of migration is very difficult to address. Our greatest consolation in the immersion experience was to be able to come alongside the migrants themselves at KBI's program in Nogales, Mexico, where we met and learned from people like Maria. Kino has a kitchen that feeds several hundred people three times a day, nearly all of them families. We spend a lot of time helping to chop onions and tomatoes and peppers that we would then serve to those who came for a meal. We were able to talk with some of the migrants and learn a little bit about their stories. I met a young couple who had walked from Venezuela through dangerous jungles and countless trials, enduring so much for the chance to seek asylum and find work in the U.S. to help feed their starving families. Dozens of stories, along with tears and laughter, were the treasures each of us uncovered in our time at Kino and all of us left our time in Nogales radically changed. Jesus shares in the Gospel today the beautiful parables about comparing the kingdom of heaven to finding a treasure in the field or the pearl of great price. What would lead us to sell all we have and out of joy to trade everything we have to obtain the one thing that holds the most value for us. For me, it was the spiritual exercise of St. Ignatius of Loyola, whose feast day we celebrate tomorrow. The exercises became my pilgrimage to the homeland of God's extravagant love and mercy. In that field of God's love, 
I found the treasure that captured my heart, the one that Jesus invites us to, the gift of kinship, community, solidarity, and accompaniment. When focused on treasures and pearls, we can forget that there is a very real price to obtain them. Nothing less than surrendering everything we have. I imagine that it's more costly than simply giving away what we own. The price is far higher. Perhaps the price for such a treasure is our very life, our ego that demands control, security, and domination. The price is our willingness to let go of our need to be perfect or right. When we surrender our ego, we can embrace deep humility, vulnerability, curiosity. We become available to be God's instrument of compassion and peace. St. Ignatius was initially slow to learn the true cost of discovering the kingdom of heaven, but he finally laid down his life as a vainglory soldier and began to surrender to God's prompting. And eventually Ignatius found that treasure, that pearl, and it utterly changed his life forever. All Jesuit parishes, schools, and missions are grounded in Ignatius' gift of the spiritual exercises. And that compels them to a work of justice, compassion, and solidarity. The ministry at Kino shines like the treasure it contains, an unwavering love for the most vulnerable at our border, women, men, and children fleeing starvation or death threats, seeking a safe place to build a life of dignity. At the Kino building in Nogales, Mexico, there is a beautiful mural of the Last Supper in the large common room known as the Comedor, where our delegates organized playful activities for the children. This amazing painting depicts migrant parents with their children sitting with Jesus while the Kino staff help serve the table of the Lord. A baby sleeps on a father's shoulders. Young brothers embrace laughing. And an old man, worn down by hunger and exhaustion, is comforted by a fellow traveler. Gritty, grace-filled, heart-rending, and hopeful. The kingdom of heaven. Above it was the scripture, do this in memory of me. I, along with my dear delegation members, had the great honor of experiencing a taste of this kingdom at our time with Kino. The cost was great, yet our hearts were transformed. What draws you to consider the cost of letting go of what you have in order to encounter, embrace, and help build up the kingdom of heaven.